Okay, so here is a short demonstration of the magnetic force using a torsion pendulum setup. Like the electric force, you're going to see here a force of attraction and a force of repulsion. It also appears that there are two sides to every magnet. So, for example, if I take this iron bar magnet and this one right here, bring these two sides close to each other, and you can see a force of repulsion. Flip this guy over, and then you see a force of attraction. Okay, now the sides of these magnets, they're called poles, by the way. They do migrate around over time as conditions change for these magnets. So now let's see what happens on the other side. Okay, there's a force of attraction, like so. And there's a force of repulsion, like so. Now on the other side, force of repulsion. There's a force of attraction, like so. Flip this guy over. Let's see, force of attraction. I'm trying to look for the force of repulsion. As I said, the poles of these magnets migrate around. There it is, like so, force of repulsion, like so. Theoretically, the two poles of each magnet should be at the opposite ends, but due to temperature changes and the fact that these are exposed to various magnetic fields over time, all these magnets are stored together, the poles, they actually migrate around on these bar magnets a little bit. So suffice to say, it looks like there are two sides to each magnet. This appears to be at least analogous, at least initially, to a positive charge and a negative charge. So like the electric force, you see forces of attraction and repulsion, and it appears there are two sides or two poles to every magnet. So a reasonable question to ask at this point is, okay, well, if the two forces, the electric force and the magnetic force, are so similar to each other, are they actually the same thing? Okay, no, they're not. And the reason for that is because if I take, for example, my plastic rod and I charge it up by friction, this electric charge here has no effect on the bar magnet and vice versa. So even though the electric force and the magnetic force are obviously very similar to each other, there is a connection between the two. They're actually not quite the same thing. Another difference here between the electric force and the magnetic force is as follows. You could, with the electric force, isolate charge all by itself. You could have a positive charge all by itself. You could have a negative charge all by itself. However, with a magnet, you can't isolate the poles. There are always two sides or two poles to every magnet. So here's another iron bar magnet. This one has been broken in half. Even still, however, this is a complete magnet in the sense that it has two poles. And I can see that here, for example, as a force of repulsion. Flip this guy over. And then there's a force of attraction like so. So unlike electric charge, which can be isolated, magnetic poles cannot. Because magnetic poles cannot be isolated, this leads us then to the second of Maxwell's equations, which you'll see in the mathematical portions of today's lecture.